Hey guys, my name is Manoj and I hope you are doing well. Now in this episode, let's talk about AWS Aprana. Now AWS Aprana is a relatively new service that was introduced by AWS to run our containers. Now in AWS, uh, there are multiple ways we can run containers. Uh, we can have an EC2 instance and run Docker engine or install Docker engines and then we can run containers. Or else we can go for a more of a platform as service like Elastic Beanstalk to run containers or else we can easily use uh, AWS LightSail to run containers or we can uh, go for more scalable options like uh, ECS or Elastic Container Service to create an ECS cluster and run our containers on top of that. So what's so special about AWS AppRunner? Now AWS AppRunner really provides you another abstraction level so that you can easily spin up your containers with minimum admin overhead. Now let me show you some features that AppRunner uh, provides to you. Now one is uh, automatic load balancing. Now unlike in other options where you have to configure load balancing, in AppRunner it is automatically enabled to you. As long as, uh, as soon as you create AppRunner service, load balancing is provided to you and then the auto scaling. So you just have to specify what is the minimum number of containers and the maximum number of containers that you desire then AppRunner service will automatically uh, scale up and down your containers depending upon the traffic. And then it's very important to note that the cost management uh, aspects of AppRunner. Now, unlike in other uh, methods where uh, your containers, uh, once they are up and running, regardless uh, the traffic, whether they are zero traffic or so much traffic, you have to pay for that container instance, right? You have to pay for this compute, you have to pay for the memory. Uh, so it doesn't matter even if you're using uh, services like ECS with Fargate mode with uh, uh, serverless compute, you still have to pay for your uh, containers regardless uh, it is receiving traffic or not. But in AppRunner it's different. So in AppRunner uh, you can specify what's the minimum number of containers that you desire. So in that case if there's no traffic receiving to your containers, the container will be in the idle mode. That means you only have to pay for the memory. That is, of course, uh, to make sure there's no in cold start, uh, but you're not paying for the compute, which is really cool. But as soon as when the uh, traffic starts receiving, it will go into the active mode. Then, of course, you have to pay for the compute and uh, the memory. So we'll discuss a little bit more about it in uh, up upcoming slide. And then uh, we have uh, logs and matrices. This is available for build time logs, runtime logs and application logs. And then you have automatic deployment. So in this case, you can specify whenever a code is merged to GitHub, AppRunner service should pick up the change and build the image and then deploy the container. So uh, it is like continuous uh, deployment process, uh, which is really good. And we are going to look at it in the demo. Not only GitHub, you can specify ECR and ECR public. So, uh, but uh, in this demo, we'll focus on GitHub. And then uh, certificate management can also be handled within AppRunner service as well. So you can uh, designate a custom domain and so on. Okay. So what is AppRunner? I think we already discussed about this. So it's a fully managed service to deploy containers on AWS. And uh, you can use source code in GitHub and build uh, with the build instructions. So uh, when you configure automatic deployment, you can specify an AppRunner configuration file so that AppRunner service will uh, look at the configuration file and it will know how to build your containers. Uh, we are going to cover that in the demo today. Yeah, and I think we discussed the rest. And another important thing that you should remember is that at the moment, AppRunner only supports Python and Node.js runtime. So uh, I think they will add more runtime going forward. But there's a one downside, I would say, or the limitation, bad limitation uh, right now. That means AppRunner service does not support VPC right now. So uh, you can't run containers inside a VPC as of the recording today. I think this is something that they're actively developing and there's an issue you can uh, track the progress. So even for me, like as soon as uh, they provided this uh, VPC support, uh, I will of course uh, move my containers to AppRunner. So let's talk about AppRunner pricing. It's per second billing and uh, you're charged for both compute and memory if your instance is active. And if your instance is idle, you only pay for the memory. And that is uh, 0 0.007 uh, gigabyte per hour. And there's another additional charge if you enable automated deployment. That means if you configure uh, 
continuous delivery as soon as you merge the code to GitHub, then Aprana picks up and deploy your containers, then you again charge uh, $1 per application per month. Next, I like to talk about how the active and idle instance works. Now here in this instance, I have set up uh, my minimum instance count to 2 and the maximum instance count to 4. So whenever there is an auto scaling happens, uh, auto, -scale, auto scaler will uh, spin up up to 4 containers because the maximum limit I have set here is 4. Uh, but it will keep like 2 instances at minimum. But when there is no traffic, both instances will be in idle mode. Whenever there is a traffic coming in, you know, one instance will get active and we can define, we can define the uh, concurrency as well. That means we can say, okay, uh, set the concurrency to 20. So as soon as uh, number of requests exceeds 20, then the second instance will get into the active mode. All right. And here's the same example. Now uh, I'm receiving more traffic so that more instances uh, get in sp spinned up, but uh, within the uh, maximum number of instances that we define. All right, guys, I think this is uh, enough for the theory part. So let's go to our demo now. And hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Dynabase. Now in Dynabase, they are providing a professional GUI client for DynamoDB. Now, if you are working with an application that uses DynamoDB, this really comes in handy. And not just me guys, but uh, many experts have recommended Dynabase uh, to get the full power of DynamoDB. So if you're interested, go ahead and check their product. I put the link in the description. Thanks. All right, guys. Now, before we start with the demo, I want to show you this particular website that is constructs.dev. Now, this was recently released uh, and with this website, you can easily find uh, CDK constructs. You know, you can find level one, level two and level three constructs. So uh, let's search for app runner. And as you can see, uh, I can find uh, version one constructs as well as version two constructs. And in version two, it particularly says it is alpha version. Uh, so I will go to version one and see if I can find a stable version there. Now uh, in version one, I can see there's a service level two service and the CFN service or the level one service. Uh, or the level one construct rather, uh, but the level one is uh, much stable. So uh, today in this demo, we're going to use level one constructs. Now, if you are new to uh, CDK, I would recommend uh, watching my CDK tutorial. I'll put the link in the uh, description. Uh, so level one essentially uh, maps directly with the uh, cloud formation. Now, by the time when you are watching this video, if uh, level two constructs are stable, I think you can go ahead and uh, use them. I don't use it because uh, still they are under development. There won't. There will be a lot of uh, breaking changes. Okay, and uh, I have created a, a GitHub repository. I put it. I put the link in the description. You can clone this repository. I've added uh, some steps here as well. So basically, since we are using CDK version one, uh, I recommend you installing uh, the version one globally, and then you can clone the repo and make sure you have AWS CLI properly configured uh, in your local machine. And then you can go ahead and run npm install. Now I've cloned this repository, it's this one. And if you open the package JSON, I can see there's uh, express uh, dependency. Now why would I need express? Because uh, our containers image uh, has to have some application running, right? So. Uh, that's where I have a source folder here and in this source folder I have the container code. So there's this index.js, this is nothing but a very simple express application and it requires express and then uh, it starts an express server and then uh, there, are, there are a couple of routes, you know, first one is the uh, main route and uh, so it's returning hello world and there's another route for health slash health and that is just returning uh, healthy with the status code of 200. So in our runner service, it will look for a health check endpoints and we will provide this particular route there. I will show you in the configuration how to do that. And then uh, we just uh, start our server. Now uh, here in the uh, package JSON, that's why we have added Express as a dependency. And then there's the CDK folder. 
Now, uh, if you go to CDK folder and go to lib and open the main stack, uh, you can see I have uh, required or imported uh, awcdk slash aws app runner, which is the app runner construct library right here. And from that, I've uh, required CFN service. And then under the constructor, I'm configuring the CFN service. Now, when we are configuring a level one constructs, those are direct mapping to CloudFormation. So I have opened the uh, CloudFormation as well. Uh, now this is the related uh, CloudFormation for app runner. And here we have source configuration. Now I can uh, drill down to source configuration and see what attributes are required. Here also you can see the source configuration and under that you can see there's this authentication configuration. So here also we have authentication configuration. I can like further drill it down. So then I see the connection ARN and here the connection ARN and so on. So uh, if there's anything that you want to uh, refer, you can always refer to the cloud formation and see what are the required attribute and then uh, fill them here in the CDK CFN uh, level one construct as well. Now the very first attribute that we need to configure is the service name. So I name my service as my app runner app. So you can add any name here and then I'm defining the source configuration. Now the source configuration is related to our container code. Now here we need to uh, define a couple of properties. The first one is since we are using uh, GitHub code, we need to set up some uh, connection. So that's where first we need to add the uh, GitHub connection ARN here. So the first thing we need to do is to create a GitHub connection and we have to do it through the AWS management console. So I have logged into my AWS uh, console and I will go to app runner. Now here I don't have any app runner service running, uh, but uh, I will go to GitHub uh, connections right here. But unfortunately we cannot create a uh, GitHub connection because uh, somehow there's no option, uh, but there's one thing that you can do. You can go ahead and try to create a runner service and while creating it, uh, you get the option to uh, set up and repository, GitHub repository. I can pick the source uh, code repository, let me check here and then I can connect to GitHub. So let's click uh, add new. Now I can authenticate with my GitHub repository. So let's give it a connection name. So I just added app runner GitHub connector and I will select my GitHub app and then click next. Okay, now it is connected to GitHub. I will go to GitHub connections one more time and see if we have a connection there. Yeah, I can see the GitHub connector. And only thing I need to do is to just copy this ARM. I'll just copy it and then come here and I will replace this text with that GitHub ARM. And then uh, I can set whether I need to enable automatic uh, deployment. In this case, I'll say true. Now remember, you will be charged $1 per application for this per month. And then I can define what my code repository is. So first and foremost, I need to add the URL of my uh, GitHub repository. So I will come here. I will just uh, copy the URL here and then I will just replace the text here. And I have to define what the uh, branch is. So my branch is the main branch because uh, I'm on my main branch. And there's another block for code configuration. Now here, the configuration source is set to repository. Now, if we look at what are the other values that this supports, I will go to uh, source configuration from the main uh, page and then the code repository and here the code configuration. So on the code configuration, configuration sources, you can see there's two values that I can submit here, either repository or API. Now, if I have a repository set, that means AppRunner reads the configuration value from AppRunner.yml file. And this is what we need because we are going to create this AppRunner.yml file uh, giving the instruction to build our Docker container. So that's why I added here with the repository. So it will always look for a AppRunner.yml 
and that aprana yml should be at the root level and that's where we added the aprana yml here and have a look at this so here i first define what the version is and then this is the time i define what the runtime now remember aprana only supports node.js and uh, python at the moment so i've added node.js 12 and you can find it in documentation uh, what is uh, the code for python and then uh, i need to specify what the build command so uh, in our source folder first uh, we need to install package json right so that's what uh, we are first doing the npm install and after the dependencies are installed how can we run the app now i've added another npm script uh, called start uh, let me show you that now here is that script it is doing nothing but uh, you know going into the source folder index.js and uh, executing with node now let me run it locally and show you what that uh, does i will do npm run start so that's going to execute that uh, node uh, index.js file so you can see that piece running and you can see it in the console so now if we go to localhost 3000 i should see the hello world message now if i do slash healthy health then i should get the message healthy so that's where as for my health check endpoint i have defined the path slash health so aprana knows uh, to how to check the uh, health of a particular container and this is all what we need to do now i need to commit this code to uh, github so i will commit to the repository that we have linked up here so the same repository let me do git status so i will add the file then i will push it to the same repository this is pushing to the main branch okay our code is updated now i can actually uh, run uh, or the deploy the cdk stack so when i deploy the CD, cdk stack the app runner service will look at the uh, repository this particular repository and it will look uh, for the app runner yml file and then it will pull the code and uh, and build the container image you know it will look at uh, these instructions and uh, build the container image and finally it will run the container for us so let's do that i will cd into the cdk folder and first i will do cdk bootstrap so it will bootstrap my environment you see it has found my uh, account id and the region that i am planning to deploy okay then i will do npm run build and that will convert my typescript file to javascript you see in the cdk folder in the package json npm run build just execute tsc and once it is properly converted you see now i have this JS file then i will do cdk deploy So the cdk stack getting deployed so now cdk through cloud formation it is now configuring the app runner service oh let's have a look so i will go to aws app runner now i will select app runner service now you can see there's an operation going on so my service name is already picked up and you can see this is the uh, domain name that by default uh, app runner gives us and uh, we can go ahead and add a custom domain uh, instead of this one but we are not going to do that now while it has been created uh, i can go into this particular service and see the logs or the events right now it's performing the health check on port uh, 3000 all right so the health check is successful and now it is routing traffic to our application you can see the service is successfully created now this is the do default domain, apprana domain. Now if I just click into it, I should see my hello world message here. Great. Now let's look at some of the other configuration here. Now uh, when I'm inside the service, you can see there's this custom domain section where I can link a domain to this. And in the configuration section, 
there are some default configuration that was set for example auto scaling you know there's this uh, concurrency of 100 so each container will take 100 requests and if there are more more than 100 requests then the next container uh, spins up or go into the active mode and by default the minimum size is set to 1 and the maximum size is set to 25 so it can spin up up to 25 containers and these things can be configurable as well all right guys i think this is what i want to show you now if you are following along make sure uh, once you are done with this tutorial to delete the service the first thing is delete the service now you can do it with uh, cdk as well or else just delete it from here and also make sure you remove the github connection as well because uh, since we have enabled automatic deployment you will be charged one dollar uh, for these connections as well all right thank you for watching guys i'll see you in another video